This model demonstrates the external anatomy of the brain. By far the largest part of the brain is the cerebrum or cerebral hemispheres, and they're hemispheres because there are two sides to this. We can't really see the line in the middle, but there's actually a dividing line going right down the center of the brain on the sagittal plane, and that line is the longitudinal cerebral fissure. You also notice that there's a lot of um, indentations, there's a lot of hills and valleys. What we say is that we slide down valleys and we go up hills. So sliding down the valley is S, that means it's a sulcus or plural would be sulci. The going up the hill would be G for gyrus or again plural would be gyri. There are several of these uh, sulcuses but there's a few very important ones. Let's begin right here. This is the central sulcus. The central sulcus is important for a couple of reasons. It helps divide the frontal from the parietal lobe, but it also has, on the front of the central sulcus, we begin motor function of the brain, and on the posterior part going back, we begin sensory uh, function of the brain. Now we pointed out that there is a frontal and parietal lobe. There's also an occipital lobe in the back. And then well defined here is another sulcus where it enables us to uh, see where the temporal lobe is divided from the parietal lobe. And that sulcus is called the lateral cerebral sulcus. Finally, uh, let's look down here and we see the cerebellum. Cerebellum comes from um, little brain, it means little brain. And then below that we can actually see the brain stem uh, turning into spinal cord. This little ball on the front is the pons, part of the brain stem. And then below that is the medulla or medulla oblongata, the bottom of the brain stem.